If you want to build powerful, real-world, do-it-yourself data science skills, this is your roadmap. What I'm going to cover are the top six machine learning techniques that you need for DIY data science, real world DIY data science. And this roadmap is based on my own personal experience. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, my dream was to become a data scientist. <laughs> I didn't have the title. I didn't have the right degrees every, and all that. But eventually over time, I learned what I needed to learn. I learned the techniques that were really powerful. And eventually I worked my way into a job, to a situation where I was doing DIY data science basically all the time. Not that I'm trying to make you a data scientist because not everybody wants to be a quote unquote data scientist, but these are the same skills that you can use in any job as well as being a formal data scientist. And by the way, at the very end of the video, I'm also gonna include a seventh technique that you really need if you wanna be super serious about DIY data science. So let's go ahead and get started with the first stop on your roadmap, and that is decision trees. Now decision trees are a fundamental machine learning data science technique. And the reason for this is simple. They work really, really well with data that comes in a tabular form. If your data is tabular, if it comes from a database, if it comes from a CSV file, if it comes from an Excel workbook, then decision trees are probably a good bet for you. Now, not only are decision trees super, super powerful with real world business data, they're also extremely easy to learn. And in fact, you can learn how they work purely and intuitively without even knowing the underlying math. Now, the great thing is, even if you decide to learn the underlying math, which is certainly a good idea if your goal is to become a quote unquote data scientist, the math isn't that difficult. No calculus is required, no statistics are required. So decision trees are the single best place to begin your DIY data science journey because the algorithms are simple to learn and then you can use that to springboard into other really super important concepts that apply to any machine learning technique that you might ever use. So things like the bias variance trade-off, how you tune hyperparameters, how do you estimate your error going forward? Like, hey, is my model going to be any good if I use it in the future? All those things are most easily learned. The base concepts are most easily learned using decision trees. So that's why they are, number one, the first place to begin your journey. Stop number two builds on stop number one, and that is the mighty random forest. Basically what happens is that you take your knowledge of trees and then you bootstrap into a more powerful machine learning technique, which is a random forest. Now, based on the name, forest, as you might imagine, it, random forest is a collection of many, many decision trees. If you think one tree is good and you think many, many trees working together might be better, then you're on the right intuitive track. So the random forest is a production quality, state-of-the-art machine learning technique, or what's most technically known as an algorithm. And this algorithm, the random forest algorithm, is super useful for any professional. It doesn't matter where you work. Healthcare, nonprofit, government, marketing, supply chain, doesn't matter. Random forest is a super powerful technique that you can use anywhere. And it also teaches you some additional concepts that are important in real-world machine learning, which is ensembles. A collection of machine learning algorithms and machine learning techniques all working together is known as an ensemble. And a random force is the best way to learn about ensembles because once again, the algorithm, just like decision trees, is as simple as it is powerful. So it's accessible to any professional. Almost no math is needed at all to understand what's going on. And you build up an intuition of why random forests are better than individual decision trees. And then that knowledge applies to everything else that you might learn. So that's stop number two. Now, that might take you a while, quite frankly. And just those two skills alone, if you learn them well, can allow you to deliver a lot of business value. But when you're ready to move on, the next type of technique that you need is something known as unsupervised learning. So this is a different kind of machine learning. So what we talked about before with stops one and two is technically known as supervised learning, which is super useful, super powerful, super valuable. And there's unsupervised learning, which is another super useful, powerful technique. The easiest way to think about the next stop intuitively is that unsupervised learning is all about extracting hidden structures and patterns in your data. For example, stop number three, which is the k-means clustering algorithm. So k-means is awesome because k-means is a powerful way to perform cluster analysis on your data. And let me give you a classic example. And it comes from the realm of marketing, which is we have a bunch of customers and we would like to be able to market to them better. So what we want to do is we want to divide them into groups. This is what's known as segmentation. But essentially what you're doing is you're clustering your customers based on demographics, like their age and education and income, as well as their individual behaviors. So let's say, for example, you operate a SaaS platform, right? Software as a service platform. You might record what people do 
right? What they click on and all that kind of stuff. And you can use those behaviors and the demographics together to group or cluster your customers and then analyze them and say, why is this group different than this group? What's different from that group? And that can help illuminate what you're doing for your marketing to improve your marketing. And that's a hypothetical example, right? Instead of customers, think insurance claims, think patients in a hospital, think employees at your company, you know, it could be anything, right? It doesn't have to be customers. It could be something abstract like an insurance claim. So cluster analysis is super, super powerful because most data in the world doesn't have the information that is needed to use the two first two stops. They just have, you just have the raw data. That's what unsupervised learning is for. And K-means is a perfect place to begin your journey with unsupervised learning because the algorithm is extremely simple to understand how it works. And generally speaking, it works pretty well in most real world business analytics scenarios. So it's a double whammy. It's powerful and it's easy to learn. Now, stop number four is another unsupervised learning clustering technique. And this is DB scan. That's what it's called, the DB scan algorithm. DB scan is another type of clustering algorithm. And the reason why I mentioned it, you might be thinking to yourself, geez, Dave, well, why would I need two clustering algorithms if this K-means thing is so good? <laughs> and the answer is K-means doesn't handle every situation. So DB scan is another good skill for you to have in your back pocket so that if you ever need something beyond K-means because it's not working well for you, you can try out DB scan. So between those two, uh, algorithms, those two unsupervised learning techniques, K-means and DBSCAN, that has basically filled everything I've needed in my work for more than 10 years now, my hands-on data science work. So those are two very powerful algorithms, right? So stop three is K-means, stop four is DBSCAN, and now we've covered supervised learning with the first two stops on the roadmap and then unsupervised learning with the next two. Number five on the list is logistic regression. So logistic regression is a old school data science technique. It's been around for a really, really long time. It comes from the realm of statistics, but don't let that scare you. Logistic regression, you can learn how to use it without learning all the underlying statistics. Some people don't like it when I say that, but it is certainly true. <laughs> And logistic regression is awesome because what logistic regression allows you to do is build a predictive model where the outcome is some sort of like yes, no situation. So for example, um, is this credit card authorization likely to be fraudulent? Yes or no. Logistic regression allows you to build a predictive model to accurately predict those things. And then what logistic regression provides you is the ability then to interpret the various factors that go into those predictions to understand their relative importance. So logistic regression conceptually has some overlap with the first two stops on the roadmap, decision trees in the random forest, because you can use decision trees in the random forest to predict these kinds of things as well. However, what you don't get with the random forest and decision trees is this mathematical interpretability, because literally what you get from your logistic regression model is a mathematical function of all the various features, all the various factors, and how much they are weighted towards the prediction. So it's more interpretable from a certain perspective. So logistic regression is super, super useful, super, super powerful. However, there's a lot more that you need to know to use it effectively. It has a lot more technical considerations. So that's why it's number five, excuse me, number five <laughs> on the roadmap, because you don't want necessarily want to start there early on in your journey, to be quite frank. You can get there eventually, but the first two stops on the roadmap, usually good enough for a lot of people for a long time. But logistic regression is there in the fifth spot. And then lastly, number six is linear regression, another old school statistical technique. Now, linear regression is similar conceptually to logistic regression insofar as it produces a mathematical model a mathematical equation of its predictions. But what linear regression predicts instead of this yes, no situation is it predicts numbers. So things like sales, um, costs, expenses, age, weight, things like that, any number. Think of something that could have a decimal point in it. And that's what linear regression is for. Now, linear regression is an OG, <laughs> old school OG data science technique. It's been around for a long, long time. Like logistic regression, the reason why it's so far down the list on the roadmap is because it places more of a burden on you. You have to learn a lot more to use linear regression effectively. And the first two stops, Decision trees and random forests can also predict numbers. You can also use them to predict numbers. So you can get away with not using linear regression for a long, long time, maybe ever, depending on your situation. But it is number six on the list for people that really want to go deep. You know, they want to take the red pill from Morpheus and they want to see how far the rabbit hole goals goes. That's number six. Here's the bonus one. Number seven, number seven on the list. And that is another machine learning technique or algorithm known as 
XG Boost, which stands for Extreme Gradient Boosting. That's a big technical mouthful, but let me let me summarize intuitively what it is. So roadmap number seven is XG Boost. XG Boost is a machine learning technique, a machine learning algorithm based on decision trees. So it's akin, it's kind of like the random forest, but it's not exactly the same thing as the random forest. It doesn't work exactly the same way. And the reason why it's number seven on the list is because the random forest will get you a long, long way, especially if you learn how to use it right. But there are occasions where XG Boost will work better. Now, the problem with XG Boost if you want to call it a problem, is that it requires a lot more technical knowledge. <laughs> it's a more complicated technique, a more complicated algorithm than the random forest, which means you have to learn more. It's harder to tune. There's a bunch of other things that go along with it, but it's super, super useful. And I would put it at number seven on the list because it's kind of the thing that you keep in your very, very back pocket when you just need it. Most of the time, the other six techniques are more than enough. Okay, so there you have it. There's your roadmap. Decision trees, random forest, k-means clustering, DB scan, logistic regression, linear regression, and then eventually XGBoost. Now, if you're interested in learning more, I'll put some resources down in the video below. And if you're the kind of person that loves an online course, I will also include some links and discount codes where you can save 20% on my online courses for various machine learning techniques. All right, that's it for this video. The next video in the series is going to cover K-means clustering the K-means algorithm. And it'll be a brief kind of crash course, relatively brief crash course introduction to it. It's not going to teach you everything you need to know, but it'll certainly give you a flavor of how K-means works to extract hidden structures out of your data. So that video should be coming up in about a week at the time of this recording. So when it shows up, I'll put it on the screen as a tile. And in the meantime, I'll put up another one of my videos in case you want to watch it. All right, there you have it, your roadmap for DIY data science skills. And until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.